The dudes <laughs> behind the foods. <laughs> shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to the dude that remixed the, uh, our new theme song. Um, damn, I forgot his name. I should, I should, I should shout him out. It is um, literally the best and the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. The <laughs> <laughs> dudes uh, behind the foods. What? Yeah, it's the dudes okay. behind the foods. <laughs> Oh, his name's Mark Lawrence. Hey, shout out to you, bro. Thank you for remixing the theme song. You know how we ask people to like, hey, take that little clip and and remix it, all the DJs? We got one person that did it, and it was Mark Lawrence. Shout out to you, my guy. You will have forever to lose your virginity in all your multiple lives. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarongsu. And I'm David So. Um, what, what did you bring us? Because I brought us something as well. Okay, well... You guys know, I don't know how this evolved, but we just keep bringing food, which makes sense because it's supposed to be a food podcast, uh-huh. but it turns out we just talk about religion. And so, <laughs> this is a spot out in South Pasadena called okay. Fiore Cafe. A lovely elder white man. Oh, Guy Fiore. Yes, Guy Fiore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, guys, it's me, Guy Fiore. I'm just... <laughs> you know what I love about that show? You could, if you watch uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives multiple times, you could tell when he doesn't like the food. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yes, I know. The same way people can tell when they watch us, because yeah. we all we always go, okay, okay, okay. I see what they're doing. <laughs> That's exactly what he says, and we do the same shit. Yeah, he goes when he doesn't like it, he goes immediately into like like describing it. He's yeah. like, okay, that got some texture, got some texture. You got some carrots in there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, those are oh, those are some carrots. He goes, goes. I can see what you did there, and that's the same shit we do. And I'm like, you fucking hate that. Well, you, I know you hate it when you ate it, dude. This right here, though, Fiore Cafe. They uh, bake their own bread. Oh, this wow. by far is my favorite slice of white bread ever. Oh my goodness! Oh, is this some pesto in there? So this is a roasted chicken walnut pesto with burrata cheese. Oh, burrata with fresh homemade. White bread. Lord have mercy. I am salivation right now. That's right. Uh, buongiorno. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I love me. Okay, let me. Oh, man, the burrata is is berating me right now. Do you feel now. that tempur mattress of a, <laughs> of a white bread? Yes, uh, purple mattress. <laughs> to use purple.com slash no chaser. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So, I was really trying to lay off the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this man has been laying off cheese since I've known him. It's never worked. <laughs> but I also, I was on, I was doing this diet for like a month because I really wanted to, um, Stay kind of slim because we started filming a new season of Deliciousness mm-hmm. this like last week. If you don't know, I on uh, I am on an MTV show called Deliciousness. It's a spinoff of Ridiculousness. Uh, we're in our third season. Glory to God! Uh, and um, I was trying to look cute on camera, but I had some. I've been eating a little bit of cheese here and there, and I definitely had a couple little a little visitors. You know what I'm saying on my cheek and on my chin, and the burrata cheese is burrotten. But I gotta, I gotta. How good is that shit? I just love pesto. For the longest time, I was like, "Ooh, I can order a pesto pasta, and there's no um cheese in here." Oh, <laughs> so much cheese in that shit. I know. It's all Parmesan cheese. I know. I learned that after doing some googling. I was like, "Damn it!" That's why it tastes so fucking good, dude. So bomb. Um, what's this place called again? Fiore Cafe out in South Pasadena. Mm-hmm. Sweet man. Every time he comes out, he goes. So how do you like the food? And I go, it's always good. And he doesn't give me a response. He just walks away <laughs> every fucking time. Let's talk about this real quick, all right? So my parents love, they're constantly asking for pictures of Veda all the time. They're like, yo, send us all the pictures of Veda you have. And I'll send adorable fucking pictures, the cutest pictures, of course. Veda's adorable. Mm-hmm. I'll send pictures, and my parents don't say shit. 
mm-hmm. in the chat. They don't, they say nothing. And I've had to say to my dad, "Dad, can I get some feedback? Did, did you guys you like it? <laughs> did you guys like the pictures?" And he's like, "You know how we feel. We love her." I'm like, "Okay, that's not how text messages work, dad." Yeah. I'm like and then uh, like repeatedly, I'd be like, "Hello, did you guys like the pictures?" And he's like <laughs> he's like it's in our heart. We don't have to say it. <laughs> That's I'm not like, how texting works. Dad. And I had to be like, yo, I was like, Dad, it's like if I brought Veda to your doorstep in a cute outfit and I said, check this out. And you looked at it and then closed the door. <laughs> and then you closed the door and went, hmm, that was really cute. <laughs> it's in my heart. I'm like, Dad, I need you. I like, I would like some feedback, please. I like how he's talking to you like you're the idiot. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you fucking stupid. And then, She's my grand, of course I love her, <laughs> dummy. And the way my dad like thinks, the way he chats too, he's he, he tries to like, he, he trolls sometime on purpose. Yeah. Or he tries to be kind of like, a, you know, like he tries to be funny. So I'm like, dad, seriously, just give me some type of feedback. Anything, an emoji, a thumbs up, something, a heart. And he'll be like, that's too Americanized. They give, they fake like everything is nice all the time. Why is he I'm, trying to be woke? I know, I'm like... <laughs> Can you just tell me the pictures yeah. are cute? Let me tell you what's wrong with the system. <laughs> or, it's like, dog, just like the photo or something. Or what do you think is cute about it? Okay. Now. Now. Let me bring you my treat. Because while shooting Deliciousness, we had an episode where everybody brought up a weird food combination and we had everyone on the panel. If you try if you it. fucking bring out that Dorito <laughs> no. and fucking banana thing, I swear to God, I'm gonna stab you in the eye. I, I had them try it. I had them try it, and um, everybody actually, Tiffany Thiessen was the only one that was like, I could see. She was like, okay. She was like, it's not as gross as I expected. She was like, okay. And one of the producers, who's like super foodie, he took one and he was like, oh, dude. And he like pounded me. He's like, I like that. He was like the only person in the whole room. He's a fucking liar. Nope. I don't. I don't know who the fuck he is, but he's over here trying to be extra woke with this food. I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. Don't be Vader right now. <laughs> no. He's a genius like me. <laughs> That's how little babies shake their head. They haven't got full control yet. So they just go. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of this the one time speaking of my parents. Um, you know, mind you, my parents haven't been uh, parents to babies in in a long time. Mm-hmm. So when ba- when when Veda was first, you know, babies can't really hold their heads up and stuff. So they always tell you hold the neck, mm-hmm. like make sure you hold the neck and like you know, like a machine gun. <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so my mom, one of the first times, like we were, she was holding Veda by herself, we had to keep reminding her at one point, like, and my mom got a little flustered because like we were like, I don't know what we were doing, we we're taking a picture or something. We we're like, Mom, the neck, the neck, and she's like, Oh my God, and Veda's, Veda's like hand is way back. Here. Oh my God, please, <laughs> like a roller coaster. All right, so I have some vanilla ice cream. Okay. Now, what I'm about to share with you, David Soak, I know you love ice cream. I do love ice cream. Is Tiffany Thiessen's strange snack combination. And I bring... Kelly Kapowski. I, Kelly Kapowski, the great, the goat. I bring this to you because I really enjoyed it, what she did here, all right? So, I'm going to give you a scoop of vanilla ice cream. That's not the weird part. Okay. I just don't trust you. That's my problem with you. <laughs> Dude, out of out of all the times we've shared, you still don't trust me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You have weird ties. <laughs> ties. Ties. You yeah. got weird ties, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. You came back into my life and gave me AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fuck her, dude. I know. What a bitch. I just watched that movie um last year during you know when the thick of pandemic. Yeah. I was watching. I'm like, hey, she's kind of a bitch, bro. Yeah. She came back, had her fun, then gave him AIDS. She never accepted his love mm-hmm. until she was like, you know, washed up already. I needed somebody to take care of the baby. Yeah, that's right. And he, all he wanted to do was love her. You know what I'm saying? But she had a pretty troubled life, though, as a kid. I may not be a smart man, <laughs> but I do know what love is. That was really good, dude. <laughs> I like that. Shrimp gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp etouffee. That's a good movie, man. It is. You know what? There's there's people out there that don't like Forrest Gump. Who? Who I don't know. like Forrest Gump? There's some people who like would argue that it's like, oh, it's so like, I don't know, they're stupid. All right. So, you have the vanilla ice cream, and we're going to make it interesting with 
balsamic vinegar. All right, now <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this. Is it the thick balsamic or is it the thin one? It's a thin one. I'm I mean, sh- I'm trying to understand. I, balsamic vinegar is actually sweet. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's a sweetness to it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I would purposefully do this. So I'm gonna drizzle this for you here. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is a lot of balsamic vinegar, bro. All right, here you go. And I'm gonna prepare my own. Wait, is she doing this just because she's like, this is it's like next level? Show. Or she legit eats eats this shit? No, she legit eats it. And actually, it's a little balsamic on this is probably gonna be fire on the sandwich. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, baby, oh, sweet mother of pearl. Oh, oh yeah, a little balsamic on this sandwich. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh sh. <laughs> Oh my bad. Oh, okay. Mhm. <laughs> 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 mhm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um let me know how you feel about this because let me tell you. I can can you, pa- can you pass me your spoon over there? Oh yes. I tried it out and your boy was a fan. I was like, "Wow, this I see where this is going." So for those of you who are only listening to this on audio, I'm have a vanilla ice cream with a balsamic vinegar drizzle, mm-hmm. which I don't think is too weird to be honest with you because I understand cuz balsamic is a little sweet, it's a little acidic. Mm-hmm. It's like having like a spritz of acid with something just too sweet. How you like that? It tastes like a a, a, a fruit syrup is on it. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's not bad. Because it's kind of sweet, kind of sour, mm-hmm. too. You know what I'm saying? It, it literally tastes like you put some type of fruit drizzle. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah. I actually like it a lot. Look at that. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna open your next fucking ice cream shop and do this. This might be the next flavor, balsamic something. Bro, um, there is... Mm. How weird... Mm. Right? See? Oh... <laughs> Oh, look at that. And you brought them Dorito chips and bananas. You fucking <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> this is actually really good. Um, have you been mm. to um Salt and Straw? I love Salt and Straw. So Salt and Straw, they have a flavor that's kind of weird. It's um olive oil. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, bro. And um it's it's like by itself, it's kind of, you know, it hits you a little crazy at first, but I got the olive oil scoop and a scoop of their lavender, and those together, bro. Popping. Mm. I feel like, oh, maybe, I think Salt and Straw has like a balsamic strawberry flavored ice cream. Do they? I think so. This is really good. It's weird good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, so when we, first, when we first did it, I'm the only one that like cleaned my, my mm. little bowl because I was really into it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Isn't that great? It kind of balances out the sweetness of the ice cream. How weird. Mm-hmm. Everybody who's watching this, go home and try this. It, it's, you're going to be... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to go, I think I like this. Mm-hmm. And then you can pour the leftover in your cup onto your sandwich. Yeah, you... <laughs> Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. When you go on dates, mm-hmm. let's say you went uh, on, on a date with a girl that you're kind of like talking to a little bit. Yeah. You guys split the bill or you pay for the full thing? <clears throat> I would only take a girl on a first date if I could pay for the whole thing. That was my credo when I was younger. I was like, if I'm taking a girl on the first date, I'm always pay for the first date. Mm. Why? I think like <laughs> I like it when the girl <clears throat> at least pretends like she's gonna pay. Oh, I appreciate that. Like when she comes up, she goes, "I'm gonna split it." If they don't do that, I'm like, "Hmm, what an asshole." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I think I think that is the overall. I need it. Unspoken rule, right? The guy reaches for his wallet. The girl pretends to reach into her purse. You go, I got this. And she goes, oh, no, are you? And you go, girl, I got this. And she goes, oh, my God, thank you. I like this. You know what's so funny about my lady? This lady, <laughs> we've been together for so fucking long. When she pretends like she's going to pay for something, I need it to be a little bit more believable. <laughs> I dislike it. So she'll be doing some shit like this. And I literally caught her ass in the middle of it, and we were laughing for hours about it. Mm-hmm. She was like, you know what? I think I'm going to get lunch this time, right? And I shit you not, I'm going to, if you were watching this on video, I'm going to show you just exactly how slow she did this. She went. (laughs) By that time, the card, I already gave the card and they came back with the fucking receipt. And she went, do you guys take cash? (laughs) 
<laughs> no. Do you guys take all change? <laughs> it's just counting. And I looked at her. She goes, and she goes, I was going to pay for it. I'm like, the receipt is already back. I signed it already. What are you talking about? This is bullshit. This like, is recently? This is recently. I'm like, you don't have to do this. You know, we've been together for a very long time now. Don't pretend. Like, I'll pay for this. And, you know, and if anything, I would appreciate when I was when I used to date, when I got the first one, if the girl would say, okay, I got the next one. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's always like a nice, even though, even if I still want to pay for the next one, it's like a nice fake gesture <laughs> mm. at the very least I appreciate it it makes me feel wanted it makes you feel it, it makes you feel the appreciation for your gesture not so much as like oh you're supposed to do this because I mean I think that is the difference right if the mentality is you have to do this or else I frown upon you then it's a turn off you open doors yes or no yes Oh, very good. I open doors, especially because I feel like it's such a rare thing. Well, okay, of course, all of this is past shit. You know what I'm saying? I still open doors for Chia, though, if you know, if we're going out. But I remember specifically, it was a girl I was hanging out with. And I actually made an old YouTube video about this, about how, how guys were just fucking up. Because mm. I opened the door for this girl. We weren't even dating yet. We were just kind of like just casually hanging out and I opened the door for her and she was like oh my god no one's ever done that for me before and this was a pretty girl and she was like shocked that I opened the door for her and I'm like you've never had a guy open a door for you ever not even on dates she's like never and I'm like in my head I'm like dudes are so dumb because it's little things like that that you can do that are like um, brownie points you know what I'm saying mm. you're scoring little points where it's like oh my god wow and it's not hard what is I believe in quality. Open your own fucking door, right? <laughs> How about that? All right? How about that? No, okay, I open doors too. <laughs> but I've, I've definitely seen people go to the extreme. Mm-hmm. I once dated a girl <clears throat> who was so used to being treated like a princess that the things that I do that I thought was just normal chivalry, mm-hmm. she thought I was an asshole because I wasn't going above and beyond. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, um, like for example, <clears throat> when I got out the car, mm-hmm. this girl sat in the car and she waited for me to come around to the other side and open the door for her. So this is, I said, this is like the <laughs> second date, and it's when I picked her up instead of us meeting at a separate separate spot. Mm-hmm. She sat in the car, and I was like, "What are you doing?" Right? She was like, "You're not going to open the door for me," and I'm like, "Just fucking open the door. I'm not going to get out to the other fucking side, <laughs> open the door, and then go that way." Right? You know, That's pure nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. The other guy that she, or guys that she's dated before, they, she was so used to this level of treatment, and they just fucking did everything for her. Mm-hmm, Which, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like for me, I think it would be nice if, if the person discussed that with me. It's like, hey, <laughs> you know, like, hey, when I date somebody or like I'm serious with them, I would like, this is the things that make me feel special. Right, right, right. And I would have said, this is over. And I would have left that, and I would have been like, I'm done. I'm not doing that shit. Well, Are you I, fucking nuts? Do you, do you pay for first dates? I didn't ask you that. I think I pay in general. I think it's like a... Even with friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if it's just simple for us to just to do one bill, I'll just pay for it and then we move on. Mm-hmm. And then I think, like, mutually for friends, if there's a trust thing, somebody always gets you the next time and it always works in circles. Yeah. But if it's first date stuff, I'll always pay. Because, I don't know, I think I, I just like it. Yeah, and I, I it's not even something I ever, like, my parents never taught me. It's I watched a lot of movies, a lot of TV growing up, mm-hmm. and I think it was kind of just instilled in me, like, yo... This is kind of what guys do, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And like, you know, bring little flowers. I mean, I wouldn't always bring flowers, but if you really wanted to, you know what I'm saying, make a good, good impression. If the girl was fucking, if you were like, yo, this is, I got to make this, I really got to impress her. It's like, get little flowers, open the door, pay for the first date, that type of shit. And, you know, of course, the kids online will be like, simp, bro, you're a simp. Oh, let me, oh, we'll, we'll talk about this after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of simping. Simping. All right. Simping ain't easy. So <clears throat> Tim put out this clip of us talking about stretch marks. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, and let's celebrate because we went viral on TikTok, How guys. random. Eight million fucking views in two days on TikTok. But isn't that interesting, though, how this, this idea that we talked about, which I feel like a lot of 
guys do think that way. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't as common as I thought it was, mm. right? Because the way you know specifically women were responding, they're yeah. like, "Yeah, fucking." Preach, and I'm like, oh, do not a lot of guys think this way, or is this like a unique thing, or what? Well, well here's the thing, right? Uh, before you get into your point, there's like a whole meme almost now mm. of that dudes with podcasts are always just gonna be like assholes towards women. Oh, really? It's like a whole thing where it's like, if you see two men with microphones, you can almost guarantee. Now, this is like the the, the meme, right? That they're going to be like either objectifying or like just like talking down on women or talking mm. shit about women. So <laughs> if you look at all the comments, it's the same joke. It's all the girls saying these two men can keep their mics because I guess there's a whole thing where it's like take their microphones away, take these men's microphones away or some shit like that, right? So all of our comments are, okay, finally two men that can keep their mics because I guess there's been like a pushback on dudes with podcasts because uh, like from women who they're like, oh God, every time I see two guys with microphones, I know I'm going to roll my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Really? So the fact that we were saying something that was kind of uplifting was like, mm. even though it was just us being like, yeah, we like fat asses. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, of course, natural bodies are great. And of course, they're going to have imperfections. It was such a shock to the algorithm. Mm. You know what How I'm saying? interesting. Because I was reading that comment over and over and I didn't understand where that came from. Right, right, right. My man, little Dick Tracy over here, dude. I could just, you know, I just assume, I just deduced, you know, from just context. There was a guy, and just to wrap back to what I was saying, and this is my biggest problem with this shit, and it's so fucking annoying. And I'm trying to turn a new leaf this year <laughs> where I don't always have to think of a new roast, you know, and then roast people because, you know, some people will take the roast really nice and we'll go back and forth and it's all good, but sometimes it take, it take take they take it to heart. Mm-hmm. And I just want to kill you guys. <laughs> but um, with my words, with words. But there's a guy that wrote, you know, calling us simps. Ah. And he was like, Look at these fucking simps. There's nothing wrong with expecting a woman to look a certain way because that's your preference. Okay. And lo and behold, and I already knew off the fucking jump, before I clicked into his dirty, stank-ass profile, <laughs> what the fuck he looked like. You know what I mean? And it was this, listen, I'm a fat guy, I could say this. It was a fat fucking dude. <laughs> just greasy, gross looking as fuck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about a standard about what he expects out of his partner when you don't even do the same for you shut the fuck up mm. i already knew what you look like mm-hmm. it's like right off the it's like oh why shouldn't i expect my lady not to have fucking stretch marks it's like he's like I, I i expect her to have a tight body right you look like a garbage bag after a <laughs> filipino house party dude just <laughs> filled with just garbage and food be quiet <laughs> shut the fuck up and by the way women who are also fit they also have stretch marks i know that's the weird thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, people don't know that. It's like, look at it. There's stretch marks there. There was also, like, and I addressed it, too, only because I was getting it every once in a while, every Ugh. every few comments. Um, the occasional woman who was like, what? So just because I don't have stretch marks, I'm not a real woman? Oh! <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, hey. Just to, just to clarify here, if you look at the context of our conversation, we were talking about, we were talking, we were talking about guys who have never seen women in real life. Yes. That's what you were saying by real women, you yeah. know. But it's funny because when I made the TikTok clarifying, it was a bunch of girls that had my back, and they were like, "Tim." You did not need to clarify. We knew what the fuck you were saying. You know what I'm saying? Of course, because that person just took it. Everybody thinks that these these excerpts are personal attacks on them. Right, right, it's right. Like, what we're saying is, is like the the woman body is beautiful in the sense that everybody's fucking different. Yeah. Not everybody fits into this perfect mold that you always see online. Mm-hmm. And it always comes from these random dudes. Like I said, Greasy McGarbage Bag. <laughs> That has this idea of what they expect out of their partner when they don't do the same for themselves. I unless hate that shit. women, unless women, you like a greasy garbage bag looking man, we don't want to shame your preference either, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> this guy irritated the fuck out of me, and I just wanted to write something back, and I was like, don't do it, David. You're above this. Let him be. Because here's the thing his also, his personality is a greasy garbage bag. Mm hmm. Just full of just, you know, just all the accumulation of drink that just tastes and smells sour at the end of the night. <laughs> I just I just wanted to kiss him in his mouth. Just since <laughs> it let you just 
Come here, let me show you what you deserve. This is you kissing. This is you kiss wrong. <laughs> this is you need to be kissing like this. <laughs> Come a this way, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just a weird thing because I always, I guess like. The funny thing is, I didn't realize uh, how common uh, cat calling was okay. until I went to New York. <laughs> oh, <laughs> doc, right. yo, because I used to hear cat calling a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I guess it started dying out after a while. But then I went back to New York, and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> it's just still alive and well out here, dude. Can I tell you, it's different out there. <laughs> it is. I'm talking about now, mind you, this was before the, um, you know. It was a really, like, people made it known that this isn't cool, right? Mm-hmm. But it was still mad aggressive in New York. Like, I remember specifically one time, dog, I was walking down the street with a girl I used to, like, you know, talk to in New York, right? We are walking together. A guy and a girl walking together in close proximity. It's safe to assume that we are potentially talking, right? <laughs> Maybe dating, situation. And this dude, I'm telling you, I'm talking about, in front of us, starts walking backwards. It's like, hey, yo, mom, what's good? Let me get your number. Where you going? I'm like, I'm looking like, bruh, <laughs> I'm right here. And it was like, this is so, this is like the next level disrespect. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm like, wow, okay, New York guys are different. No, I saw, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people like Jamaican folks or island, like Caribbean folks can either attest to this, but I saw it multiple times with like Jamaican dudes. Like they're super aggressive with their shit. <laughs> and all I kept thinking was, I don't think I could do that. Right. I don't think I could just walk up and just, I, I can't do a Jamaican accent, but they just start <laughs> saying the Jamaican slang shit. And there's literal like that. It was a literal actual thing of somebody hollering at somebody. Mm. I'm like, damn, the confidence in a person to just go out there and just do that. So I don't know if I've told you this story. It didn't work, by the way, but still. <laughs> I, I tell you the story about the time I was in some island resort with Chia, somewhere in the Caribbean. And <laughs> and I, if you listen to my other podcast, you've heard this story, but we're going to tell it again because that's what we do here mm-hmm. on Dudes Behind the Foods, all right? So me and Chia are on a, a paddle boat. Have I told you this story? Probably, but fuck it. Mm-hmm. So we're on a paddle boat. And when you're on the paddle boat, it's one of the hotel employees, like, his job is to paddle you around while you're back there with your chick being cute, whatever, whatever, right? So, (laughs) this man turns around, looks at Chia, looks at me, and goes, sister? (laughs) Yo. I'm like, come on, man. Hold on on a second. (laughs) (laughs) You want to talk about a reach. He just... He if, tried. If you're listening, if you're only listening and you're not familiar with who I am and my life for some reason, my wife is half black <laughs> and half Latina, does not look Asian. I am I am 100% Thai. I do not look any anything else. <laughs> he looks at you. Father? <laughs> this is your father? Like, if, as if for some reason, like, we were related, he can be, and he was going to be like, oh, well, since that's not your man. <laughs> like, what the fuck is, that's hella funny, dude. And I was in another resort with Chia in Jamaica with her family. The so disrespect. mind you, I was with her family the whole weekend, with, and I'm walking next to Chia the whole weekend. The one moment... I walked off to grab some life jackets because we were about to go kayaking. I'm still laughing. Sister? <laughs> Sister? I would have just been like, uh, all right, guy. Like, you know what, man? I admire the gall. Yeah. Go ahead. Make love to my lady. Sister. <laughs> so we're in Jamaica. And I, I leave Chia. This is the only literally the only time I left her the whole weekend to go get some life jackets. And I see one of the employees. Go up to her. He's talking to her. I'm like, oh, man, here we go, right? I could just see it. I could see it in, in the demeanor. So I come up to her. I come back with a life jacket. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that dude try to holler? She's like, yeah. I'm like, what'd he say? <laughs> this man said to her, he's like, um, is, that your, is that your husband? And she's like, no, that's my boyfriend. He's like, if if you were mine, I give you two rings, one for the left hand, one for the right hand. <laughs> that is smooth as fuck. Super smooth. That's smooth as fuck. I'm, I'm sure that's worked yeah. on other occasions, but I'm like, come on, bro, I'm literally right there grabbing life jackets, dog. Dog, if that if I was a girl and that happened to me, and if I was wearing a sweater, if you said one for the left hand, one for the right hand, I would have pretend I was an amputee. <laughs> Damn. Just out, what do you mean? I don't have two hands. And he would have just been shocked. And then he would have said, I, you want a bracelet? <laughs> <laughs> this guy 
it smooth. You can have my pussy. Just take it, please. That's so funny. Oh, would you like some more ice cream? I would actually like some balsamic vanilla ice cream. Let's do it. <laughs> it's weird. I fucking love this. It's actually really, really good. I'm shocked. You, you know, you, you never know sometimes. I never. So. Tiffany Theason, I love you. Tiffany Theason, I love you. Your childhood crush. Yes, Tiffany Thiessen was definitely a uh, a big childhood crush of mine. I mean, who who wasn't a little in love with Kelly Kapowski? You know what I'm saying? Kelly Kapowski or Lisa Bonet? Oh, Lisa Bonet. If I had to choose, I mean, back in the day, I would have definitely chosen. Um, you want some more? No, no, no. I definitely would have chosen um, Kelly Kapowski. But oh, speaking of Lisa Bonet. Zoe Kravitz, have you seen the new Batman? Yes, I have. I actually did an hour and 40 minute review on that I film. bet you did. If you want to hear David's uh, hour and a 40 minute review on the new Batman movie, make sure you watch his other podcast, the Genius Brain Podcast. But not to go into the movie, Zoe Kravitz is fine. My God, I had no idea. Regardless of how you felt about the movie, it is worth paying the ticket price to see Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz is beautiful there's she's, no other word for it i know she's just like i mean like every time she was on screen whatever she was wearing i was like swooning just huh because i've seen zoe kravitz in films before but for some reason her as catwoman yeah is something in my penis it was it was it was i think it was just the energy too you know what i'm saying she was like confident did you like the movie i overall enjoyed the movie I didn't know how to feel about it. I had to watch it twice. Did you? I watched it twice. Fuck. Yeah, so first one, I was confused because mm-hmm. I didn't understand what was going on in the film, right? Mm. But then, because <clears throat> there were things that it was unintentionally funny that made me die laughing. Like, for example, mm-hmm. when they had, it, was, it wasn't it was Gordon. Gordon's not the commissioner yet because this is him when he's younger. It yeah. was the commissioner at the time above me. Okay. He just walks in and he goes, what's going on here? I'm like, <laughs> Where the fuck did this voice come from? <laughs> and I couldn't stop giggling. Ah. But then I started watching the film. I'm like, oh, this is actually not a Batman movie. This is a detective movie. Yeah, yeah. So they're doing the the old comic book detective types of voices. Right. It's almost like a, a, a noir. It's uh, film noir. It's yes. exactly what it is. Yes. So I, I once I got out of that shit, then I started enjoying the film more. But it's a, it's a, it's, if people don't like it, I understand. I, I also understand. I, I mean, I kind of got prepped. Someone told me they were like, oh, it's more of a detective movie than a Batman movie. And I mean, I was kind of going in like high key. I was just hyped because I saw the trailer. I was like, the cinematography looks dope. Like, oh, it was amazing. More than anything. I mean, if anything, I'm going to just love how it looks. You know what I'm saying? Um, and of course, without getting too much into it, because you can listen to David talk for a whole hour and 40 minutes about <laughs> it. Um, I, 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 like I said, I overall enjoyed it, right? I definitely feel like if I was chopping that motherfucker together, I would have cut a good half hour. <laughs> and It's long. It's long as shit. And here's the thing, right? For me, and Rick actually disagreed with me on this, but for me, it was a long movie and it felt long, okay? Mm. Rick was like, it, to him, it didn't feel long. Um, but for me, I was like, this feels long. And not that that's necessarily bad either, but... If if someone was like you want to watch it again, I'd be like, I think I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's definitely it's three <clears throat> hours and twenty minutes long, I believe. Mm-hmm. And for me, you'll hear it on the other podcast that the third act was very unnecessary. Like that, the water thing. I don't. I didn't need any of that shit. It could have ended at Arkham Asylum. And I think that's where it felt long for me. Like, yeah, I, like, like I said, I would have chopped some things up. <laughs> yeah, it would have been like, yeah. I don't need that last third scene. Like, there's a lot of stuff that that film was trying to do at the end that it felt like studios came in and were like, we need a big bang. Mm. And it didn't need that, right? Because there was repetitive things that happened at the end. They were trying to wrap everything up. Because I hear you. The idea of the film, if you guys haven't seen it, who fucking cares? Hurry up and watch it then. <laughs> and, and granted, there are some great Big Bang moments as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially since... Oh, when he came down that ceiling at the third act? Yes. And oh, the, yes. I was like, duh, that shit's fucking dope. Yes, it's some, it's some dope shit. Like, look, watch it for yourself, man. Look, at the end of the day, watch the shit for yourself. Um, like I said, overall, I liked it. Would you want to be in a superhero film? I'd love to be in a superhero <laughs> film. What character would you play? <laughs> like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? You would be fucking... Have you seen, um, what's it called, Peacemakers? Oh, 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 John Cena's shit. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've seen, a, I haven't fully sat down and watched it, no. Oh, have you seen the kid Judo in there? <clears throat> no. All right, he's like this short Asian guy that just kicks everybody's ass. Oh, why? I gotta be the short Asian guy. <laughs> because you're the short Asian guy in this room. That's true. <laughs> That's true. 
Um, I don't know, man. I feel like the Marvel Universe is so huge. There's like so many characters that, you know. What is the superpower that you would have? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, if I was my own superhero, if I was just a superhero. You have one superpower. Like in, like if I was a superhero in real life? For real, for real. Yeah, in real life. What would it be? I mean, I feel like the hack is to be like, I would be like a fucking uh, transform into any other person so I could be all the superheroes. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the hack. That's the no easy hacks. answer. No <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would love to be somebody who... That I used to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. my superpower would be have one one hit wonder every year <laughs> and people would have no idea that it was me every time so i would have the longest career ever but still maintain my privacy Ooh. wow no i would <laughs> all right <laughs> um shit you know what i'm saying like it's yeah i feel like okay so so now okay so now i'm making this answer more complicated than it needs to be because so my first instinct is to be like if someone's like, hey, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? And if it's like me in regular life, yeah, I would love to fly. I would love to go invisible. Mm. Okay? That type of shit. But then if you're asking me like, because you got me in superhero mode, if it's like, oh, if I was trying to be like an interesting superhero character, like what my what would my superpower oh, you be? don't need any of the character arc. It's just you have a superpower. Oh, okay. Then I would like to teleport. <laughs> okay, that's it? Yeah, anywhere I want. Teleport and fly and like... Um, I don't, I don't know. Telekinesis would be nice. Okay, you just named three. I said fucking one. You greedy fuck. <laughs> this, one, this one just made him the most ultimate superhero ever. <laughs> There's got to be a, a guy that does all those. <laughs> yeah, you need one. Rogue can. Rogue can. She has telekinesis and she can fly. Um, wait, does she have telekinesis? She can read people's minds. I don't know. Okay, okay, fine. If I was to pick, I would choose. Um, fly. Wow. You. Time travel. Okay. <laughs> It'd be the best, dude. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I would just look at stocks and I'm like, oh, okay, let me just go back an hour real quick. But the repercussions of your decisions could have uh, uh, um, 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 repercussions <laughs> that reverberate forever. You'd be the... <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst Uncle Ben ever, dude. <laughs> With great uh, reverberations. <laughs> Peter, don't leave yet. I'm not done. <laughs> Come back. I need, to, I need to finish this sentence He's real quick. He's dead. He's dead before he gets his, <laughs> his shit out. With great power comes more more power. <laughs> it's like, dude, Uncle Ben's dumb. I, I mean, yeah, no. Okay, time traveling is lit. But I feel like from watching so many movies, it, it's so dangerous. Because I don't know. I... Somebody asked me uh, years ago, and people didn't understand my answer. Was uh, they said, "What is some, what is like some of your biggest regrets?" Yeah, and I and I generally said, "I don't really have. I can't think of any right now." Yeah, because I don't know if this is fucking corny, but I really do think everything happens for a reason. I agree. Right. So if I take away something that I feel like I was embarrassed about, or something that I feel like I wish wouldn't happen. There's something along that trajectory that happened because of this. I know. You so, became a better person because of it. You fucked up and you learned because of that fuck up. I agree. Yeah, so it's like I don't know if you if I want to take anything away cuz I even thought about this is by the way, I I actually took a a weed gummy and then <laughs> I started it started like expanding into other <laughs> ideas cuz I was like, look, if I had the power of time travel and I went back in time and I changed this one part out, right? Let's yeah. say for example like this. I said um Instead of doing YouTube, right, mm -hmm. I went back in time and I invested into Facebook and I became a gajillionaire. Yeah. I'd be balling as fuck. Yeah. But I would have never met you. Mm -hmm. I would have never met all my friends. that I, It's like there's consequences for all this type of stuff. I know. So would I change these things? Probably not. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I was saying about your superpower. There's dangerous repercussions that could reverberate forever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking hate that. <laughs> all right, all right, we're we're, we're going to marinate on this. Take a break. Get some ice cream. We'll be right back. All right, David, so, um, you know, while we're talking about time travel, I, uh, you know, and since we have ice cream here and since we need something to drink, I also brought you another treat. Let's do it. What comes better with ice cream? Blood. Root beer float. So I brought not your father's root beer, which is root beer with a little bit of alcohol in oh, it. Oh, really? Yes. Well, turns out I actually do have a bottle opener. I forgot. Well, fun. I've never had root beer with alcohol. Never ever. 
No. Uh, me neither. I don't know why I said that like I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of childhood did you have, bro? Idiot. <laughs> oh. So I'm going to get myself a little ice cream. Root beer is one of those things that people either hate or they love it. Because what ice the fuck is a flavor? Cream. Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> was What was Forrest? Was he uh, mentally challenged? Yeah, he was like on the spectrum. Or was he just like on the spectrum? Because those are like two different things, right? I mean, he was definitely like, I, he wasn't uh, all the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Remember, because when he was trying to get into that school, he was like right under the line. This mm-hmm. is where the average kid should be, and your son is right around here. Mm-hmm. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what movie always makes me fucking cry? What? Speaking of uh, mentally, uh, movies like this, mm-hmm. I Am Sam. Oh, you know what? I've never seen I Am Sam. Let me tell you something. I Am Sam didn't do, didn't get like the best reviews ever. However, that movie, every time makes me cry. And I watched it on a plane. People just, it, it was during COVID time too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Snot everywhere. <laughs> Everybody just looked at me like I was, get this fucking Asian guy out of this plane right now. He's crying. There's... I cry every fucking time, dude. All right, I'll check it out. Dakota Fan is it Dakota Fanning in it? Yes. I like crying during movies. I'm a big crier actually in movies. Really? Yeah. Um, what was a movie that you <clears throat> cried in? Not too bad. That you cried in that you were shocked or surprised that you cried in? Pokemon the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not Detective Pikachu. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm talking about the first movie where Ash Ketchum starts getting zapped because Pikachu is trying to bring him back to life. And that shit made me cry. And guess what? I didn't tell anybody I cried. But when other people told me they cried, I called them fucking losers. <laughs> Let me tell you some side note. One of my favorite episodes of Pokemon, and I wasn't like an avid watcher, but I happened to catch this episode, is where they lost their trainer. They lost Ash. They lost everybody. So all the Pokemons, they're lost and they're trying to navigate their way through the forest or whatever the fuck. And of course, they don't really talk as if for Meowth, right? Mm-hmm. But they're getting into arguments with each other because they're pissed. Oh, yeah. So Bulbasaur's like, Bulba, Bulba, Bulba. <laughs> <laughs> they're like having like debates with each other in their fucking languages and I died. Um, okay. So one of the movies I, I was a little embarrassed about, even as a little kid, embarrassed that I cried at um <laughs> the Flintstone movie. The first one. The one with uh, uh Rosie O'Donnell? Yes. Why did, did you cry in that? Uh, I'll tell you because I, I remember specifically specifically what part. I don't remember shit else about the movie except for this part. Um <laughs> so Fred and Barney got into whatever trouble they got into, and they're about to get hanged by the people of the city because they're pissed. And so they're about to go, like, they're, they're in line for this hanging, and, um, and they start confessing to each other why they are like, you know, Fred's like, you know what, Barney, I'm sorry, I'm, you're, you're my best friend, I shouldn't have done this to you, blah, blah, blah. And they're, like, getting emotional with each other. And I remember being in theaters as a little kid and, like, tearing up and being like, am I crying during the fucking Flintstones movie? What's wrong with me, man? Really? That's yeah. the thing that made you cry? Yeah, bro. Oh, here's a good question. Rick and Chi are hanging off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you save? It's on, it's on the podcast right now. Who do you save? Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this question is a lot easier to answer now. Because, oh, because you have a kid. Because I have a kid. So, of course, I need a big, strong man like Rick around <laughs> <laughs> to help me take care of my child. <laughs> no, no, no. I would have to I just, save. <laughs> I just pictured Chia hanging, and she's like so certain that you're going to save her. And then you grab her head, and you slowly pry each finger off. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Veda, and I'm like, say bye to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, the last finger is the ring finger with her diamond, and it just slides off. <laughs> and I take it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Rick, let's go to the pawn shop, my guy. I know. Uh, no, I mean, well, yeah, I would I would have uh, to save Chia so we could, you know, raise my child as a family, right? And Rick would understand. And that's the thing about Rick. He would understand. He'd be like, all right, dog. I mean, <laughs> Rick's like, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I knew you way longer than I knew than you knew her. And I mean, it'd be way easier for me to pull Chia up than Rick. <laughs> okay. So these are all just, you know, easy answers. Well, how about you? Muriel 
Or, um, shit, who's a friend of yours besides me? Mm, who do you care about? Khalif? I mean... <laughs> Muriel or... Um, Muriel or who do you hang out with? Yeah, I refuse to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fifth. I say this right now. You would kill Rick immediately. All right. Your mom and dad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's going on record. And I know you're going to get flamed. <laughs> I think I think I'm just gonna let them both die, so right. I don't have to deal with the other one. Who do you love more? I'm like neither. I'm like <laughs> you guys lived a long life. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, whoo! <laughs> That's what you get for not commenting on the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Her dress God. is. <laughs> Hillary Banks, <laughs> will you marry? Ah, oh, shit. Um, okay, but time travel. Yes, I would. <laughs> I, I like. I want to go back to time travel because I, I like this topic. Um, because first of all, uh, Back to the Future is my shit. Um, but you said everything that was proving my point about like. So if you if that was your superpower, you would just go back and not. You would just go back and look at shit because everything you would do would potentially change the future. I would say that I wouldn't go too far back in time. Okay. okay. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it would be like, I don't know, <clears throat> I'm looking at some crypto shit and then it blew up. Okay, okay. It like 10x out of nowhere or 20x. Then okay. I would just go back a couple days and then reinvest and do okay. shit like that. But I would definitely want to go back in time and observe shit. Because mm-hmm. I want to see how people function, right? Because everything that we talk about now is always like conjecture and what we think people are like. Mm-hmm. But what I'm finding out more, just from something as simple as watching TV, yeah. is that we're not that much different than we were 30 years ago and now. It's a lot of the same issues, mm-hmm. the same topics, and I'm starting to think that I'm a little full of it. It's like, oh, I <laughs> thought that this is like some shit that our generation was right. doing, and it's not. They've been doing. They there were people who did it before us. I'm so glad you brought that up, right? Because okay, recently, uh, Phil from Wang Fu, he was a new father. Congrats to him. He posted on an Instagram post that, like, you know, aside from the joy of being a new father, there's a fear of raising your child in today's world and how scary that could be, right? And he kind of asked, like, what are your thoughts on like that type of thing, raising a child in today's world, blah blah blah. And I was like, man, honestly, and you kind of start to realize this. So the world's always been fucked up. Yeah. It's always been fucked up. Like, even, like, this shit today where we're like, wow, this is so fucked up. It's like, no, this has happened, like, so many times. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, history repeats itself. There's always some type of trash human being that has existed throughout time. It's just that, like, you know, back then it wasn't blasted on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really um, see as much. You didn't see as much of it back then because you weren't exposed to it, right? Yeah. Um, And it was always, like, and even when you're a little kid, because when you're a little kid, like people would say like, oh man, life was so much easier when we were little kids, though like the world is so much worse now. It's like, no, we grew up and we like started noticing the fucked up things. Yeah, somebody was, <clears throat> it was either a tweet or like a Facebook post, but this comment cracked me the fuck up because somebody was writing like, the kids that we are going to have now are going to grow up in the most fucked up part of anybody's generation. And then somebody wrote in the bottom, was like, yeah, those World War II veterans were a bunch of pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, which goes to what you say. Like, during whatever time that was, there was something crazy that was happening. Yeah, dude. And it's like, you know, and I felt for my advice. And I left a comment. I was like, all right, Phil, seeing as how I've been a dad for a year longer than you, here's my advice. I'm like, dude, the world's always been fucked up. We're all going to die. So you might as well just enjoy your time with your people and have fun and love on each other. I you love know? Phil. Every time he posts something, I picture a violin playing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like a violin or like some kind of Korean drama music playing in the back. Phil's an emo- you know, his, me, me, and, me and Phil, it's so funny because um, we agree on so many things. But, and, but especially in terms of the way we post on social media, our brains function in completely different ways, right? Mm-hmm. And like every post from Phil is like a very long introspective um tldr tldr caption yeah and by the way i i d r because it is t l um but and my captions are very like 
what's some what's the dumbest thing I can say for this? You know what I'm saying? But then me and me and Phil sit down to talk. We agree on like majority of shit. Where Phil, because like Wang Fu kind of has this, um, like, uh, vibe already. Um, and there's a certain clean image to uphold. Yeah, and he, he represents a certain part of a community that we don't represent. Right, and so there would be times where, <laughs> <laughs> where I would do just a stupid ass video. Like I made a video about like why girls should date Asian guys, and it was all like flipping Asian stereotypes. Like, but it was like silly shit, right? Mm-hmm. And Phil was like, dude. Such a good video. I agree with everything you said, but I can't comment that. <laughs> or, or we'd be on set for something, and there would be like a really like a dirty joke that Phil would want to make, but he he knew he couldn't make it to everybody, so he'd come over to me and whisper it to me, and I would laugh. That's so fucking. You funny. know what I'm saying? Because he knows there's kind of like you know an image he has to uphold. You know what See, I'm saying? he does it smart though. Mm-hmm. See, he keeps a lot of his inside thoughts inside. I put it out <laughs> everywhere. <Yeah. laughs> and then I'm secretly like, guys, you know David's really smart and nice. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know that goes against his image, but... Uh... <laughs> I know. Even when people approach me, they go, can I please take a photo? <laughs> and I'm like, why do you sound like an orphan child with the bowl of porridge? I'm a very sweet guy. Mm-hmm. It's just, don't talk to me when I'm eating. I mean, that goes for everybody. Yeah, I just like to eat. Have you ever had someone come up to you while you're eating for a picture or something like that? Oh, yeah, and I always tell them the same thing. It's like, hey, just give me like five minutes. Let me mm-hmm. just like finish up real quick, yeah. right? And I'll, if if it's not with somebody, like for example, I didn't like it when I was eating with my parents. Mm. Listen, I see my parents twice a year, mm-hmm. you know, and this person, actually, funny thing that you mentioned this, it was at this <laughs> um, uh, restaurant out in Glendale. And then we're sitting, this guy literally comes up, he puts his hand on my fucking shoulder, uh. which number one, don't fucking touch me. Mm-hmm. I don't know you, mm-hmm. right? It just, it's just disturbing. Nobody likes that. You should have screamed, don't <laughs> touch me. Uh, I said, let go of my purse. <laughs> and then he touched my shoulder. He was like, David Stone. He like shook me. And this is literally while food is like on my fork. Mm. And I'm already getting heated. Yeah. Because right? yeah, yeah. I don't know who this person is. Yeah. And it wasn't processing. I was like, oh, this is, you know, whatever fans that I have. It's like, it's fan. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, he's excited. That's an excuse. And I was like, okay, cool. He was like, I, I need to take a photo real quick. And he tries to hop over the fence while my parents were having a conversation. I'm like, hold on, bro. I was mm-hmm. like, we're almost done wrapping up. Like, just go do whatever you're doing. I, I'll stay here for an extra 15 minutes. And I'm just going to talk to my parents and you can just come back. Yeah. We're good. I'm not going to leave. Right. He goes, no, no, no. We need to take it right now. What? Yeah. And then he tries to hop over the fucking fence and then starts trying to do a selfie mm. but I literally grabbed this phone and I was mm. like bro I asked you nicely yeah. like I, I, I want to take a photo with you but you can't be fucking touching me and doing this shit super disrespectful in front of my parents mm-hmm. you know and it's just like it makes my parents uncomfortable yeah. it makes me uncomfortable like I genuinely appreciate the fact that the thing about him I don't even think he was a fan Right, because mm. I don't even think a fan would ever do that. Because mm, they know you. They know me, <laughs> yeah. right? I think he just saw a couple of videos, and he mm. wants the the clout thing. Which, mm. by the way, you shouldn't get clout from a Z-list celebrity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> set your sights a little fucking higher. Guy. You're at least Q. <laughs> I'm a Q-list celebrity. You've been on a Netflix show. Okay. Come on, I'm a, I'm an endless celebrity right now, dude. <laughs> and so it just like that's the point where I'm like. It's not like I'm saying no. Right. I'm saying for sure, like I appreciate it, but I just let me just finish this up real just quick. Give me a second. And I think it's okay for me to request that, right? I don't think I that's... think that's completely fair. I mean, you know what, to 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 my uh people's to my followers' credit, um, people usually will will wait or they'll or they'll ask very nicely. Especially if I'm with Chia, you know what I'm saying? If I'm with the homies, yeah, fuck it, come up to me, right? While I'm eating, it's not a huge deal for me. Uh, when I'm with Chia and we're being romantic, I mean, people have been pretty respectful. I've had, I've had like one table be like, like they literally were done eating like half an hour ago, and they waited for me and Chia to get done before they asked for a picture. I'm like, that's I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that's dope. You know? um, <clears throat> it's a little different now um, <clears throat> with the baby, with the baby, right? Because just because you know you kind of don't want people to get too in the baby's face, right? Like specifically one time, I mean, and this wasn't like it wasn't on purpose, but me and Chia were walking through the grove. And Veda was asleep on my chest in a little carrier. And we're like, oh, we're like, oh, sweet. She's, she's asleep. We're walking. It's peaceful. And then someone like saw me and was like, oh, my God, can I get a picture? Woke the baby up. Oh, I no. was so like secretly pissed. I was like, <laughs> you woke the baby up. Yeah. Come on. Oh, fine. Let's take a picture. But I was irritated. You yeah, know? It's yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on, Mo. Come on, Mo. Or whoever that is. <laughs> yeah. Take a second and like and assess the situation. You know? Yeah, I feel like it's that's like a super small percentage of people that we're talking about. Like ninety nine point eight percent never like this. Cause I feel like most people have common sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've definitely ran into a few 
a little more than other people. And I think it's because of my personality set that they feel that they have to match something, right? Ah. But you know what? We're in regular conversation. We're just talking. Like, yeah. this is just us joking around, having a good time. And sometimes when we do my earlier videos, I would put on this persona that was... T- my personality just times 10. Yeah, yeah. And they feel that they have to match the camera person. Right, right, right. So I had a guy one time, I was out in Hollywood and we were eating at this breakfast joint. Dude comes up. <clears throat> it was me and three other friends. We're sitting. And this guy literally, I shit you fucking mm. not, grabs a chair from his table and just slides it onto our chair. Ah, yes, you told me the story. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and yes, yes. Holy shit. The amount of rage that mm-hmm. came out of me. Because he was trying to like, perform jokes in front of us yeah for what for fucking what man <laughs> like or you could have just taken a picture said hi had a regular conversation but mm-hmm. he chose to do that and it got to the point where his friends had to come over and apologize like mm. i'm so fucking sorry mm. and they had to take him away it's like come on doing? come on man just kiss me in the mouth like a normal person just kiss me on the fucking mouth like sour bag r- rotten face guy <laughs> um i don't here's one one last thing that i also hate okay i hate this above and beyond coming up to me when I'm eating to take pictures, okay? Because that's like, okay, it's cool. Just give me a second. We, let me chew my food. We can take a picture. I hate when people run up to me with their Snapchat story or their IG story already going. Mm. And they're like, hey, look, look who I'm here with. Because cause then it's like, you have to like fit. You have to be like, oh, or else you look like a dick. You know what I'm saying? And they have this like, oh, you. it doesn't matter what you could be doing. Rick has this story. I don't really remember this. But this is just to... to to go off of how oblivious, or maybe that people just don't give a shit, right? Mm-hmm. We're in Vegas. I'm obviously arguing with my girlfriend at the time on the oh, phone. No. Pissed, <clears throat> stressing. And this guy kept coming, yo, can I get a picture? Yo, Tim, can I get a picture while I'm on the phone arguing with my girlfriend, dog? And Rick was like, yo, like, the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. You know what like, I'm saying? What are you doing here? Like, yeah. clearly, this situation doesn't really call for this. Yeah. So I kissed him on the mouth. <clears throat> And then after you guys made love, what happened? Uh, he fucking left the room without saying bye, that <laughs> asshole. <laughs> he fucked up twice, man. <laughs> oh, Gary. Poor guys. I miss him. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you for watching another amazing food podcast episode. Uh, I am the... Tim Chantharangsu. And I am the <laughs> David So. <laughs> and this has been The Dudes, The Behind, The 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 Foods. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, rate it five stars on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And um, have a great day. Bye. The Dudes, Behind the Foods. Yo, it's The Dudes, Behind the Foods. Do, 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 do.